Alright, so I'm just going to set up a real simple pulley. Right here, a fixed pulley hanging right here. <coughs> I'm going to take string through it. And on this end of the string, I'm just going to attach a kilogram mass. So if there's one kilogram, attach it to the pulley on this end. And now I want to lift the mass. So there we go, I'm lifting it. Now, what is my effort or my resistance force? Resistance force, right? That's, the, that's how much force needs to apply to the object to move it. How much force is being applied to the mass? It's a kilogram. How a much kilogram? force? No, a kilogram is mass, right? Yeah. 9.8 newtons, right? So the resistance force is 9.8. There's no way around it to lift one to lift 9.8 newtons a kilogram I need to apply 9.8 newtons of force so now let's follow that over the pulley to the input side of the machine how much force am I applying 9.8 so let's attach, we'll attach a scale to it now it's upside down so if I allow it to pull what does it read? What? 9.8, right? We're going to say it's 9.8. So to lift this mass, I need to apply 9.8 newtons. But this is a pulley. Pulleys are supposed to make work easier. What's the mechanical advantage of this pulley system? It's down instead of up. So in that sense, my work's a little easier. But let's put a value to the mechanical advantage. What's the resistance force? 9.8. What's the effort force? 9.8. So the mechanical advantage is 1. So it doesn't seem that there's much mechanical advantage. The only advantage is that I get to change the direction. Now let's set up a different system. Right now I set it up so that I have a movable pulley attached to the load and a fixed pulley here. Now I want to pull again and I'm going to move it. What is the resistance force? 9.8, right, again, there's no way around it. To lift this kilogram, I need 9.8 newtons of force. So that's what I'm generating over here. But now, has my work become easier, maybe? We'll took the scale to and see. So now I'll lift it. What does it read? Like 5.8 or 4.9, right, same thing. Now we'll say it should read 4.9, and it's a bad scale. So it's 4.9. So what have I done? I've cut the effort force in half, right, from 9.8 to 4.9. Okay. So now my mechanical advantage is resistance force of 9.8 over effort force of 4.9, which is a ratio of 2. Right. So now my mechanical advantage is 2. What that means is I've multiplied my force by 2. 4.9 times 2 is 9.8. But at what cost have I done that? Let me raise this up a little bit. What is, what's the trade-off? Watch my hand. It goes from the pulley to the desk. A less motion. Yeah. Right, but this doesn't go nearly as far, right? Now it only goes from the desk to halfway. While my hand does this whole thing. So 4.9, my, my hand force, my effort force, through this distance, pulley to desk, that product, 4.9 times that, is work, equals the work over here, but it's 9.8 times only half the distance. So the work's the same on both sides. It's just that less force, more distance, less distance, more force. Okay, that's the trade-off with machines. We could rig all kinds of pulleys here. We can make a really complex system and then we can make the work real easy that I just, you know, pull it a little bit and it'll lift it, but it'll only move a little bit maybe. I'd have to pull a whole bunch of string just to move it a little bit because it would all be going through the pulleys. Okay, so that's the trade-off, force for distance. That's the whole idea behind machines. Now. I have a thousand newton box, and my goal is to lift it 
to a height of one meter. So I want to walk over, lift it up, and place it on there. And let's look at the four variables. So Fe, Fr, De, and E. Okay, so I'm going to walk up to this box. I'm going to lift it. What is my effort force? How much force do I need to apply to lift it? All together. Thousand newtons, Thousand newtons right? And the resistance force is equal to that in this case because it's going to apply, it's going to require a thousand newtons to move it. So the resistance force is basically the weight of our object. This is how much force I need to apply to move it. I'm going to apply my force through one meter. So my effort distance is one meter. The resistance distance or the distance I want to move the load is one meter. Okay. But one thousand newtons is just too much for me to lift. Okay, so I'm gonna, I want a simple machine to make it easier. Maybe I'd like to propose a simple machine. A ramp. A ramp, okay. Let's use a ramp. So there's our one meter height. Now we hook this ramp to it. There we go. And we're going to be able to push our 1,000 Newton box up our ramp. Let's say the length of the ramp is two meters. That would mean that we had a triangle with a 30 degree angle there. So now, let's look at the four variables again. Fe, Fr, DE, and Dr. To, to get this thousand newtons up here now, I'm no longer lifting it. I'm going to push it, push it up the ramp. And we remember that the force I will need to push with which is going to be my effort force, is going to equal the force down the ramp, right, which we know to be FGX, which is 1,000 sine 30. Sine 30 is 0.5, right? So we're going to need to apply 500 newtons of force to match the force gravity applied. So now I'm going to get 1,000 newtons up to a height of 1 meter by only applying 500 newtons of force. Everybody see that? But my resistance force is the weight of the object, which is still a thousand newtons. Now, through what for what distance am I going to apply the 500 newtons? Two meters, right? So my effort distance is two meters. My resistance distance is still the one meter I want to lift it. So that's one meter. But you see, my input work FED is a thousand. My output work is FRDR a thousand. Let's look at the mechanical advantage of the ramp. FR over FE, so 1,000 newtons over 500 newtons, newtons cancels, is 2. So this ramp multiplies my force by 2. The IMA, or the ideal mechanical advantage, is DE over DR, so that's 2 meters over 1 meter, or 2. So in this case, the MA and the IMA are equal. Why is that the case? Why bother defining both of them if they're going to be equal all the time? Jeff? Because it's not always going to be ideal. So it's not always going to be ideal. When is it going to be ideal? Right. So ideal is going to imply no friction, no lost work, no lost energy. So the ideal mechanical advantage is DMA when there is no friction. But when does that happen? Never, right? So in reality, we are going to have a friction force here. And we're just going to put a number on it. We're going to say it's 50. So if our friction force is 50, then my effort force really is what? <coughs> 550. Which means that the work I put in is actually going to be equal to 550 times 2, or 1100, which changes this to 550. So my mechanical advantage is actually 1000 over 550, maybe around 1.7. So the mechanical advantage of the ramp is actually less, right? It's not what it would be without friction. So this is really just useful to tell you what is the mechanical advantage when there is no friction. Is that what you get, Josh? Uh, 1.8. 1.8, okay. How can I reduce the friction of a ramp to make the mechanical advantage better? Jeff? Mm -hmm. 
Right, I've got to lubricate it, right? I can use graphite or Teflon. I can even coat it with ice. It's going to be hard to walk up, but there would be less friction. You can put wheels on the box. You can put wheels on the box. So one kilogram is 2.2, .2, right? So that's that's how many kilograms is that? 100? No. Thousand newtons is how many kilograms? Is how many kilograms divided by nine, divided by ten? Right? It's 100 kilograms, 220 pounds. Right, so that's Let's muscle it that's up. taking me plus a little bit more, me holding 20 pounds and lifting it up a meter. That's hard to do, I would think. All right, we just gotta suck it up. You gotta suck it up. <laughs> All right, so uh, Colin, light one more time. So everybody understand that ideal mechanical advantage, mechanical advantage. Okay. So the IMA is always greater than MA because of the presence of friction. <coughs> okay, let's skip this. Here are our six simple machines. We're going to list them from top left over and the bottom over. This one? Lever. Lever? You need to know. If you need to draw them to remember what they are. We're gonna go, we're gonna keep going over them here though. Your call. So we got a lever, pulley, there's a wheel and an axle. Wheel and axle. Incline plane, we'll call it. Wedge. Wedge. Screw. Screw. So those are the six. There's a cheesy mnemonic that our book provides if you want to use it. Lever, pulley, wheel and axle, wedge, plane, screw. Let people wander when the party starts. Let people wander when the party starts. It's good advice to live by. Let's <laughs> <laughs> talk the case clear. So the pulley, right, uh, well, let me say with the wheel and axle. On the wheel and axle, you're going to uh, apply your force on the outer edge, which would be a greater distance. And then that, the load is attached to the axle, which is a smaller distance. So it's kind of like a lever in that your work is going to be easier on the outside than it is on the inside because of the difference in distance. The pulley, you have to set up multiple pulleys to get the same effect. Okay. Because like for just a single pulley like this, there is no I. There's the MA is one, but if we hook a bunch of pulleys up, that would be a better mechanical advantage. I think we'll stop here because I want to. We're going to start with levers tomorrow, and I want to do it all in one lesson instead of breaking it up. So I think we'll be done here. All right. Finished a little early. We didn't get this far in those lessons.
We were focusing. We were focusing.